Good morning. My name is Pastor Harry Craighead, and we welcome you to the Feeding House Ministries, a teaching ministry that focuses on your soul and your eternal destination. This morning's teaching is going to come from Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, and I will be reading from the New King James Version. Now Joshua, well, now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and all of its men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war, and you shall go around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall blow seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark. But on the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times, and the priest shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they, have, when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you heard the sound of the trumpet, that all of the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Sharp, intelligent, well thought out strategy is an absolute essential for wartime and warfare. No significant victory can be won without well planned out military strategy. Military strategy is St strategy in military conflicts is so important that most nations have established military academies to train their officers how to plan strategic plan and carry out orders during military campaigns. The strategy to conquer the city of Jericho was unique. It was unique in two ways. The strategy was laid out by God himself. And the strategy was a seemingly foolish plan. Thus, my subject for this morning is victory through faith. How can a person conquer and be victorious throughout life? How is victory over the enemy achieved? By faith. A faith that believes God's word and his instructions. The military strategy laid out by the Lord actually didn't make much sense. Nevertheless, Joshua believed. He believed that God would perform a, perform a miracle, give him victory over the great city of Jericho, give victory, victory if he did one simple thing, obey God. Yes. You and I, as servants of God, are at war and most and must be ready for battle. Our spirit man must be conditioned for a fight, just like a boxer. It's important that in our marching, we should be quiet, seeking the Lord, fasting and praying, receiving from the Lord, allowing the Lord to prove and provide the strength and stability we need for the battle. Just keep doing this. Just keep marching until the Lord gives you release in your spirit. Now, the whole while you're doing it, the enemy is looking on and mocking you. Whatever you do, don't stop. The temptation will be to start criticizing, but just go on marching. Before long, the enemy will begin to worry and say, I wonder what they're up to, or what do they have up their sleeve? The greatest difficulty in the Christian life is to get to the place where one is prepared to admit that the whole thing is too big for them, that the power of the enemy is too great for them, and that if their Jericho is to fall, then somehow, some way, God must bring it about. As long as we think we can do it on our own, the omnipotent resources of God through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, cannot help us. When we reach the place that we surrender all to him, he brings his spiritual power, victory, and blessing into our lives. He turns what appears to be to us an utter failure into total triumph. Jesus. 
The city of Jericho seemed to be impenetrable, impossible to count to, to conquer. The gates of the city had been tightly shut. No one went in and no one came out. This was the first fortified city conquered or encountered by the Israelites within the enemy territory. Remember, the Israelites were nomadic people who had been reared in the desert. They had been wandering about for over 40 years. They didn't have weapons of war needed for assaulting a fortified city, nor the skills or experience to use them if they had had them. Nothing but a direct interference of the Almighty could in a week's time give a city like Jericho, thoroughly on guard and prepared to be besieged, situated as were Joshua and the Israelites. They were simply ill-equipped to attack a walled city, that is, in the eyes of the world. In fact, it had been the fortified cities that had discouraged the first generation of Israelites from entering the promised land. The reports of the spies in Numbers 13, 28 reports, nevertheless, people who dwell in the land are strong. <coughs> Excuse me. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. What a strange spectacle it must have been for the inhabited, <coughs> excuse me, what a strange spectacle it must have been for the inhabitants of Jericho to see the Israelites encircle the great fortifications of the city daily in absolute silence. The only sound that reached the walls was the sound of the trumpets blown by the priests. Jericho was a fortified city, either double walls or either walls that were about 20, 20 feet thick and 25 feet high. Standing on top of the walls, soldiers could see for miles. Jericho was strategically located as a fortress to guard against invading armies crossing, coming across the Jordan River into the hill country of the Canaanites. The city was considered a mighty fortress, impenetrable, invincible, impossible to conquer. Jericho stood as a picture of power, the enormous strength of the enemy that God's people confronted as they sought to conquer the promised land of God. There were at least five ways to conquer walled cities in that day and time. By scaling the wall using ladders or ramps, by digging tunnels underneath the walls, by using battering rams to break through the city gate or else by smash a hole in the walls of the city by laying say, siege to the city until the city until the people were starved and into surrender or by using uh, means of deception such as a truce or ambush from the human perspective the situation for Israel seemed hopeless they weren't skilled at modern warfare. They had never used ladders to scale walls of, of the enemy, nor battering rams to build up to break open the city gates. They never built ramps, nor moved ramps up to the city walls under the fire of arrows or other weapons. The conquest, the conquest of the enemy just seemed impossible. But notice, there's no indication in scripture whatsoever that the Israelites were gripped by doubt or fear. Confidence, trust in God, was reigning supreme in their hearts. They had complete confidence in God that God was going to give them victory over the enemy who was trying to keep them out of the promised land. Yes. The promises of God aren't designed to promote inactivity on our part. They're given to encourage and assure us that if our labors conform to the divine standard, Amen. they will not be in vain. Amen. The commander of the Lord's army, the Lord himself, encouraged and gave clear directions and instructions to Joshua. Remember, the commander of the Lord's army had just appeared to Joshua. 
Joshua chapter 5 verses 13 through 14 tell us, And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man sitting opposite him with a sword drawn in his hand. And he said, and, and Joshua went to him, and he said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, No, but as the commander of the Lord's army, I have now come. And Joshua fell to his face, fell his face to the earth and worshipped him and said to him what does my Lord say of his servant Joshua needed encouragement and he needed to know how to attack the city therefore the Lord appeared to him and identified himself as the commander of the Lord's army notice the instructions Joshua was to know that the victory was guaranteed by the Lord himself no matter how impregnable or invincible the enemy seemed to be, victory was assured. In fact, God had already delivered Jericho into the hands of his people. The enemy would be conquered by God's people. Joshua was to have all the soldiers march around the city once a day for six days. During those six days of marching, one lap each day, the Israelites would get a good and acquainted with all of the impossibilities, the thickness and height of the walls. He was to have the priests march in front of the ark, uh, carrying a trumpet made of ram's horn. On the seventh day, the army was to march seven times around the city with trumpets blowing. After marching around the city seven times on the seventh day, all the people were to give a loud shout and when they heard the blast of the trumpets, the walls of the city would then collapse. There's no obstacle that is insurmountable, no barrierable, barrier that's invincible, uncomparable, immassive, hopeless, or impossible as long as we face it in the Lord. When the, laws of the, when the walls of the city collapsed, the soldiers were to charge in straight into the city to conquer the enemy. Man's impossibilities are God's opportunities. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 4 through 5 tell us, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. They were directed to go on the go and do on the last day all that they had done the previous six days. Marching around the city was not only an act of obedience, but also an act of faith. By repeating the marching operation so many times, the people were impressed by their their need in their trust to God's word and to obey his directions. Israel's faith was the key to their victory. On the seventh day, God and Joshua created a pact. And the secret to getting what was housed behind the closed doors was located in their mouths. You have to love God to stay by something that you want now and cannot have it and wait until he says, you can have it now. I'm sure they wondered why they were instructed to go around on the last day seven times. When you have to go through more than what you ever have, when it seems like everything is coming at you all at once, it's because the closer you are to the promise, the closer you are to the promise, and you're closer to the promise than what you've ever been. Militarily, this would seem to be a foolish strategy in the eyes of the world. Nevertheless, it was the strategy laid out by God for his people. The Israelites believed God's word. They would, if the Israelites believed God's word, they would conquer the enemy. However, if they rejected God's word and refused to act upon it, they would lose the battle and be defeated by the enemy. Jericho is a picture of seemingly impregnable, invincible enemies that often confront us as we walk 
through life. As believers, we're seeking to lay hold of the promised land, the great inheritance God has promised us. But as we seek our inheritance, strong, powerful enemies confront us. Enemies such as the world, the flesh, and the devil himself. But remember, that victory has already been won by Jesus Christ. The world, the flesh, and the devil have already been conquered by him. Notice what scripture says. There's only one way to conquer the world by believing, by believing God's word. When God tells you how to conquer the world, you must listen to what he says. James chapter 2 verse 19 tells us, you believe that there is one God. You do well. Even demons believe and tremble. There's only one way to, to conquer the flesh, by believing God's word. When God tells you how to conquer the flesh, we must listen to what God says. Psalms 145 verse 21 tells us, My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever. There's only one way to conquer the devil, by believing God's word. When God tells you how to conquer the devil, you must listen to what God says. Amen. James 4 and 7 tells us, Therefore submit to God, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The victorious life, conquering the enemies that try to keep us from the promised land, comes through faith, a faith that believes, trusts, and obeys God's word. Always remember this fact. The believer who conquers throughout life is a person who reads, studies, and obeys God's holy word. It's that person who knows the promises of God, of God. The promises of God live within his heart and life. And because the promises are living within, within him, he is able to cling to them, conquering all the enemies that attempt to destroy him. Yes. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 tells us, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And 2 Timothy 2.15 from the Amplified Bible tells us, Study and be eager to do your utmost to present yourself to God. Approved, tested by trial. A workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing and accurately dividing, rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Christ has conquered the world for the believer. Our task now is to claim victory, the victory of Christ through faith. Amen. Most people give up not knowing that they're just a day away because Christ doesn't give us a time. A day doesn't have to be 20, a 24 hour cycle, but can be a season of receiving. Some of us stop when we're just a praise away. You say, I don't feel like shouting today. You missed it. The best time to praise and when you, is when you don't feel like it. Amen. The day you take a break is the day you break down. Jane, John 6, 16, 33 tell us, These things I have spoken to you, that in, you, in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus has conquered the flesh with all of its lust. He did this on our behalf. Romans 6 and 6 tells us, knowing this, that the old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. And Romans 8 and 3 tells us, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on the account of sin. He co commended sin in, in the flesh. Jesus has conquered the devil. He conquered Satan, the devil. 1 John 3 and 8 tells us, he who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. 
For that purpose, the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. When we are faced with the walls and obstacles in our lives, it's a blessing to know that we don't have to face them alone or in our own strength. How can a person conquer, be victorious throughout life? How was victory over the enemy achieved? By faith. A faith that obeyed God. The commander, Joshua, had received his orders from the commander-in-chief himself, the Lord God himself. The strategic, the strategy of the attack was an unusual strategy, a seemingly foolish strategy. It wasn't the strategy that would be taught in the military academy. It wasn't the strategy that would be praised or pursued by the average military commander. By far, most commanders consider the strategy irrational or even foolish. Nevertheless, it was the strategy laid out by the commander-in-chief, the Lord God himself. The only question was, would Joshua obey the command and would the officers obey Joshua? Faith in God's word was essential, and Joshua and his ar army and his officers would prove their faith by what they did, prove their faith by obedience. Yes. The people of God were to march around the city of Jericho in silence. Silence spoke volumes, for it testified to the Israelites God, their faith in God. There's nothing so impressive as silence. Nature has great silence. The mountains, the seas, the forests, the nights are often silent as they testify to God's greatness just by their presence. He is, therefore, we are. The silence of the Israelites was the silence of expectation. Having crossed the Jordan River by a miracle, they silently expected another miracle from God. Perhaps that faith is the greatest that waits in silence upon God, believing that he will work. Victory over Jericho was demonstrated by one great truth for all of history. Faith in God is the most powerful force in all the world. A person conquers and is victorious over all the enemies of life only if he believes, trusts, and obeys God. Victory is achieved through faith. The walls of Jericho came tumbling down, collapsed because the Israelites believed God and trusted in his word. The enemies of the world are constantly out to overthrow us, to defeat and destroy us. Enemies such as the carnal and flesh, lustful and immoral, the worldly and sinful, the evil and wicked, the greedy and covetous. Enemies of the world such as the selfish and egotistical, the blinded and deceived, the lawless and violent, the abusive and hostile, the oppressive and vengeful. The enemies that stand opposed to believers and to the peaceful loving people of this world of this earth are innumerable the world is in constant warfare between nations between neighbors and even between family members these enemies also within this world are spiritual forces principalities in power in high places of the spiritual world that oppose mankind that are attempting to defeat and destroy us but there is hope hope in god and that hope comes by faith in god god will give the power to conquer all the enemies of this life if we believe trust and obey his word Faith in God is the victory that overcomes this world. Faith is the victory that conquers all the enemies that assault us. Yes. Hear me and hear me good. There's nothing in the devil's arsenal. No stumbling block. No wall that can withstand the shout of victory. Hallelujah. It's the high praises of God. The hallelujah shouted by true believers. Yes. The high praises of God unleashed in a shout is able to cause any wall to crumble. Amen. It's able to cause any mountain to move. Yes. It's not proclaiming your victory over the enemy, but Christ's victory Hallelujah. over all evil. Hallelujah. 
It's victory through faith. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the truth of your word and blessing us, knowing that if we have faith and obedience and trust in you, all things are possible. Now, may God, who gives this patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other as fitting for followers of Jesus Christ. And then all of you can join together in one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.